Hello, Thermo fans. I want to talk to you today about interpolation on the Steam table. Actually, interpolation in anything, but Steam table is where we care about it. And quality, which is also something we use the Steam table for. And uh, I know that you can do, you can skip interpolation by using a online or spreadsheet based Steam table. And that's great. I want you to know how to do that. So go off and figure that out. But also, I want you to be able to use a paper steam table. And the reason for this is that uh, the paper steam table is always available. Sometimes some of these other functions are uh, kind of locked behind paywalls. And the paper steam table gives us the ability to look things up by other variables than just temperature and pressure. So online, it's often very easy to look things up if you know the temperature and pressure or the temperature and that it's saturated. But sometimes what we know is other properties such as the enthalpy and the volume. And in that case, it's actually a bit easier to flip through the paper version of, or PDF version of the steam table rather than uh, use it electronically. So I'm gonna make sure we know how to do this. So uh, our example is if we have saturated steam at 122 Celsius, what's its enthalpy? And we're gonna have 100% vapor here. So what I wanna do is I wanna go to my textbook uh, and E9 has properties of water. And this version of the textbook, uh, I can't really write on it. I'm gonna wanna scribble and so on. So it's helpful to either have it printed out uh, or in my case, I screen capped it and I'm gonna drop it in uh, to paste it here so we can all kind of get an up close look at the math of what I'm looking at. And I'm gonna grab a highlighter. And so we see that we have values for 120 and 125 Celsius. Oh, they're right behind my head, that's useful. There you go, 100 and 125 Celsius. And uh, coming across, you see we have in order, that's a volume, specific volume. So it's the flip of density. Usually we think in terms of density. Uh, here it's volume per kilogram. So it's often when people say volume, it's just meters cubed. But in this case, specific volume, volume per kilogram. So there we go. Uh, so we have that for both the liquid and then the vapor. And uh, we have internal energy for the liquid and then the vapor. And then there's this value in the middle and that's the difference between them. That's the amount of energy, internal energy you must put in to have it change phase. So uh, we don't need any of that right now. Uh, next we have enthalpy of liquid and vapor, also with a delta H of vaporization. And we also have values for entropy. So uh, we, our problem is we're looking for the enthalpy of the vapor. So I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna highlight the two values that we're interested in. So remember again, we're down here at the bottom. 120 and 125. So we're between, oops, ha, look at that. I highlighted the wrong thing. So that's the change, that's not the enthalpy of the vapor. So here you go, enthalpy of the vapor coming right at you, it's these two values here, okay? And so uh, how do we interpolate here? Well, I'm gonna hit you with the way um, I'm one of these people who uh, sometimes I don't memorize an equation, sometimes I kind of rederive it for myself every time. So I'm gonna give you the derived version of this uh, and then we'll turn it into the simplified version. So the derived version of this is uh, it's, it's a weighted average or it's a, um, uh, well, it's an interpolation, but it's a ratio between the things we know and the things we don't know. So what we have here, is I would write it, whoops, I don't need highlighter, I want ink, like T2 minus T1 divided by H2 minus H1. So that's the slope at this part of the fit. And note this is assuming there's a line between these two things. And that's usually a pretty good assumption as long as you were talking a short distance. So five degrees, that's a short distance, we can call this a line. Uh, and so then that's uh, on top of that, then it's T2 minus T, that is the temperature we care about, in this case 122. And on the bottom, it'll be H2 minus H. And that's the enthalpy we're looking for. And this is great 
but it'll be better if we algebra it so the whole thing is arranged as h equals stuff, right? Like that, that would be more convenient. And in fact, it's gonna be even more convenient if we go to the book and look at where the book already did the algebra for us, so we don't have to do the algebra, and we just use their version of it. So this is equation 1.25 in the book. And they write in terms of M because M can stand in for any random property um, that you could do an interpolation on. So it's M, it's M1 plus X1, or X, sorry, X minus X1 over X2 minus X1, and that's all times M2 minus M1. And so there you go. That is the mathematically equivalent if M is enthalpy and X is temperature. So we can plug in these values that we have. So uh, 120 and 125 for the uh, X2 and X1. We put in 122 for X. And then M2 is 200. 2713.1 kilojoules per kilogram, and M1 is 2005.93 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, so go through and give that a shot, and know that uh, while this uh, data here in the steam table is presented at a very high degree of precision, right, we've got uh, six significant figures here, uh, when you go and look at an online version, you're actually going to get a slightly different answer, and that's okay.